In this lesson, we're going to cover limits at infinity and horizontal asymptotes. This first example says sketch a graph of a function f that satisfies the given conditions. The first condition I want to look at is f of 0 equals 1. So that means we're going to plot the point 0, 1. Next, we're going to look at this condition. It says the limit as x approaches 0 from the left of f of x equals negative 1. So as we're approaching 0 from the left, we're going to go to a height of negative 1. You'll notice I put an open dot at negative 1 because it is a function and it has to pass the vertical line test. Next, right here, we have the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x equals a height of 2. So similarly, I put an open dot at a height of 2 as you're approaching 0 from the right. This next condition says the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x equals infinity. So if we're going to approach 2 and the height needs to go to infinity, that means your graph is going to shoot up to infinity from the left and the right. The next condition says the limit as x goes to negative 2 from the left of f equals infinity. So here's negative 2, and we want to approach from the left, and we're going to go to infinity. So I kind of just made this line go up to infinity from the left. Next, we have x equals negative 2 from the right of f needs to equal negative infinity. So again, we're approaching negative 2, but we're approaching from the right, and we need to go down to negative infinity. So I'm going to continue this line down here, and then I'm going to go down to infinity. Next, we have the limit as x goes to negative infinity of f of x equals 1. So that means as we go to the left, the function needs to approach a height of 1. So now you can see right here, I have the graph is approaching a height of 1 to the left. And then finally, we have the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x equals negative so that means to the right, so I just made the graph go down to negative infinity, and I just want to double check everything on this graph. So we have f of 0 equals 1, so that's at 0, height of 1. We have 0 from the left, you're approaching negative 1, so that works. We have 0 from the right, the function is approaching a height of 2, so that's good. We have the limit as x goes to 2, so right here at 2, from the left and the right, the graph is going up to infinity negative 2 from the left, so here's negative 2. From the left, the graph goes up, so that's good. Negative 2 from the right, so here's negative 2. From the right, the graph goes to negative infinity, so that's good. And then as x goes to negative infinity, we're going to a height of 1, so that's great. And then x goes to infinity, so that means as the graph is going to the right, the height needs to go to negative infinity, and it is. So we've sketched the graph of a function f that satisfies all of these conditions. This next definition says the intuitive idea of a limit at infinity. Let f be a function defined as an interval from, and it's closed bracket, a to infinity. If that's the case, then it says the limit as x goes to infinity, so to the right, the function will reach a height of l. And this limit expression, it says that it means that the values of f can be made arbitrarily close to l by taking x sufficiently large. Right here I included a note. It says the statement is read as the limit of f as x approaches infinity equals l. The way we want to interpret that, as x gets bigger and bigger in the positive direction, the values of f get closer and closer to a height of l. Similarly, you have the intuitive idea of a limit at negative infinity. So it's the same thing, it's just saying that the limit as x goes to negative infinity or to the left of f will equal a height of l. And to demonstrate this, we're going to look at the function f of x equals 1 over x. So if you put the equation 1 over x into an xy chart or you use your graphing calculator, you'll get this graph. And we can see that the limit as x goes to negative infinity of the function, so meaning x goes to negative infinity or x goes to the left, if we look at this graph, and you go to the left, the height of the graph is getting closer and closer to zero. Next it says the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x, so that means to the right, the height of the graph is also equaling a height of zero. And you'll notice as you go to the right or to the left, the graph will never actually equal a height of zero, so that creates a horizontal asymptote. So we get a horizontal asymptote of y equals zero. And that leads us into our next definition. The line y equals l is called a horizontal asymptote on the graph of y equals f of x if you have either of these cases. The limit as x goes to infinity of f equals l, or the limit as x goes to negative infinity of f is equal to l. If you have either of these cases, then you can conclude that the graph has a horizontal asymptote of y equaling that same value. And I just have a note right here. It says it is possible for a graph to have more than one horizontal asymptote. So we'll see that in an upcoming problem. This problem says consider the graph f of x equals tan inverse of x 
So here's your graph for tan inverse of x. You have horizontal asymptotes at pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. And right here it says the limit as x goes to negative infinity of f of x. As we go to negative infinity, the graph approaches a height of negative pi over 2. And then the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x. As we go to the right, f approaches a height of pi over 2. So this is a case where we have two horizontal asymptotes. We have y equals negative pi over 2 and also y equals positive pi over 2 as our two horizontal asymptotes. This next problem says to evaluate the limit. So as you'll notice, it says the limit as x goes to infinity, and then we have this rational function. In order to evaluate this limit, we're going to manipulate it first. Okay, so the trick to evaluating this limit, we're going to use this technique. It says divide the numerator and denominator by the highest power of x in the denominator. So if we look at this problem, in the denominator, the highest power is x cubed. So we're going to divide both the numerator and denominator by this highest power. Okay, so I wrote it like this to indicate that we're going to divide the numerator and the denominator both by x cubed. Now that we've distributed 1 over x cubed to the numerator and the denominator, now we can simplify individual terms. Okay, let me check that I did that right. These x cubes canceled, so we just got 2. This term stayed the same. We have negative 5 over x cubed. These canceled. We just have 3. These reduced to make 1 over x squared, and this term just stays the same. Next, we're going to evaluate the limit. It says that x is going to get larger and larger in the positive direction. So you want to think of this fraction, this one, and this one. As x gets larger and larger, think about taking 5 and dividing by a larger and larger number. So 5 divided by, let's say, 100, 5 divided by 1,000, 5 divided by 10,000. This fraction ends up... Same thing here, this fraction is going to go to 0, and this fraction is also going to go to 0. So I'm just using this notation that as x gets larger and larger, all three of those fractions are going to go to 0. And finally, all that you have left is the limit of a constant, which is just 2 thirds. So our final answer is 2 thirds. This problem says the limit as x goes to infinity, and then we have this rational function. We're going to do the same thing. In order to evaluate this problem, we're going to divide the numerator and denominator by the highest power in the denominator. So our highest power in the denominator is x to the 1. So to do that, we're timesing by 1 over x on top and bottom. The next step is we're going to distribute 1 over x to the numerator and the denominator. So once you distribute, then you're going to simplify each individual term. So x squared over x becomes x. x over x becomes 1. This term stays the same. And this term simplifies to negative 1. Right here, the limit as x gets larger and larger, you can see that this fraction is going to go to 0. In the numerator, you have x plus 1. As x gets larger and larger, this is going to grow and get larger and larger and go to infinity. But you're still dividing by a negative value, so you end up getting negative infinity. So one more time, as x gets larger, this numerator is just going to grow without bound but then you're dividing by a negative value, so you get negative infinity. In this example, we have the limit as x goes to infinity, and we have a rational function again. So we're going to simplify the same. We're going to divide the numerator and denominator by the highest power in the denominator. Okay, so we're timesing the top by 1 over x cubed and the bottom also by 1 over x cubed. Now we're going to distribute to the top and the bottom. And now we're going to simplify each term. At this point, we have 2 over x, 5 over x cubed, both of these terms are going to go to 0 as x gets larger and larger. Similarly, these terms down here will also go to 0 as x gets larger and larger. So you end up getting 0 over 1, which just equals 0.